Imagine waking up to discover that the same names dominating your screen, your wallet, and your daily life have quietly decided they no longer trust the United States to be the cornerstone of their future. Five of the most powerful companies on Earth, Microsoft, Meta, Tesla, Netflix, and Apple are moving not just parts of their operations, but core pillars of their strategy across the border to Canada. And they're doing it faster and more decisively than almost anyone predicted. This isn't some passing trend or a PR stunt designed to score headlines. It's a deliberate retreat from an America these corporations increasingly see as volatile, unpredictable, and slow to adapt. At the heart of this migration is a single unspoken reality. Innovation doesn't wait. For the last few decades, the U.S. could take for granted that the best talent, the best infrastructure, and the most resilient supply chains would always live inside its borders. But that certainty has crumbled. Trade wars have made components harder to source. Supply chains have become vulnerable to sudden disruptions, pandemics, geopolitical standoffs, even tariffs that shift from month to month. Prices are swinging wildly. Regulatory processes are taking years instead of months. And immigration bottlenecks are choking off the flow of engineers who keep these companies at the cutting edge. In that vacuum, Canada has emerged as the quiet, alternative a country that isn't perfect, but offers something priceless, stability and clarity. In a single stroke, they've committed over half a billion US dollars to build massive new data centers in Quebec far. From the congested corridors of Northern California and the regulatory gridlock of Washington State. And the reason is, bluntly pragmatic, Quebec's hydroelectric power is cheap, predictable, and fully renewable. That matters because the energy demands of cloud computing have exploded in the last five years. When you ask your smart speaker a question or spin up a new instance in Azure, somewhere a server farm is burning electricity by the megawatt. In much of the U.S., those costs are climbing steadily, while approvals for new infrastructure can drag on in red tape for years. In Quebec, Microsoft found a place where they can build faster, scale further, and lock in predictable costs for the next generation of services. That's why this isn't an experiment. Their Canadian cloud capacity is about to grow by 750%. That level of investment reshapes more than a balance sheet. It redefines where digital life happens. And Microsoft is just the start. The other four giants aren't coming north for photo ops. They're moving because the old playbook where America offered the smoothest path to growth has been thrown out the window. Canada, with its combination of skilled workers, clean energy, and supportive policies, is stepping in to fill the vacuum. What we're witnessing isn't just a reshuffling of office locations. It's the first wave of a much larger shift, one that could redefine the next 20 years of innovation, job creation, and economic power. While Microsoft is laying down physical infrastructure, Meta is waging a different kind of battle a race to secure the talent that will decide the next decade of technology. For most people, Meta still means Facebook. But inside the company, everything is about AI and the metaverse. Those two frontiers demand armies of software engineers, researchers, and product designers. And in the US, that army has become harder to recruit and even harder to keep. The problem starts with America's immigration gridlock. Under the H-1B system, securing a work visa for a talented engineer can take half a year or more. By the time the paperwork clears, your competitor might already be six months ahead. That lag is intolerable for a company trying to lead the next computing revolution. So Meta looked north and saw something the U.S. could no longer offer. Speed. Canada's global talent stream can process visas in as little as two weeks. That single advantage has turned Toronto into a magnet for global engineers. Meta isn't setting up a support office here. They're building one of their primary engineering hubs with plans to hire 2,500 employees who will work on core products. From AI infrastructure to augmented reality, 
it's not just the immigration pipeline that's luring Meta across the border. Toronto has quietly amassed one of the world's densest clusters of tech talent outside Silicon Valley. Graduates from the University of Waterloo and the University of Toronto are flooding the market with the skills needed to build everything from machine learning frameworks to next-gen VR devices. Even more important, Canadian universities have been bolstered by government investment that supports cutting-edge AI research funding that goes straight into the pipelines. Meta wants to tap. Meta's move is strategic on multiple levels. While U.S. offices battle talent shortages, this new Canadian hub becomes a testbed for products aimed at a truly global audience. Canada's multicultural population provides an ideal proving ground for tools and platforms designed to work across borders and languages, and by offering compensation on par with California. Meta is making it clear they aren't here to cut costs, they're here to find the best minds. Wherever they are, when you consider that most tech companies don't, even employ 2,500 engineers worldwide, you start to see the scale. This isn't a satellite outpost, it's a major nerve center. And it tells you exactly how serious Meta is about outgrowing the limitations of the U.S. system. They're not just adapting to a new reality, they're betting their future on it if Microsoft and Meta are racing to build the infrastructure and talent pipelines of tomorrow. Netflix and Tesla are focused on something even more elemental, securing the resources and creative power that keep their industries alive. For Netflix, that means production capacities, sound stages, skilled crews, and locations that can double as any city in the world. For Tesla, it means raw materials, without which the electric vehicle revolution grinds to a halt. Netflix has already transformed Toronto into a global production powerhouse. They've leased hundreds of thousands of square feet at Cinespace and Pinewood Studios, creating a mini Hollywood where shows like The Umbrella Academy are filmed not for novelty, but because it's simply more efficient. The math is straightforward. The Canadian dollar delivers an instant 30% discount. Ontario's tax credits can refund up to 35% of labor costs. Local crews are experienced, but less expensive. Permits are faster. Unions are more cooperative. When you add it all up, Netflix can produce more content, more predictably, and at higher margins. This isn't outsourcing. It's a recalibration of where and how entertainment gets made. Those stages in Toronto aren't temporary rentals. They're anchors for a long-term pipeline that will supply Netflix's global subscriber base at a time when California lost 15,000 entertainment jobs in a single year. Canada has been adding thousands more. That shift alone signals the industry's new priorities certainty, speed, and cost control. Tesla's story is even more striking. If the EV boom is the next industrial revolution, lithium is the new oil, and the United States, for all its ambition, doesn't have nearly enough of it. So Tesla made a move that could change the entire supply chain by striking a deal with Piedmont Lithium in Quebec. The company locked down 125,000 metric tons of locally sourced lithium ion off to keep its factories humming and its battery ambitions on track. It's the only major spodumene concentrate project on the continent. This isn't a stopgap, it's a strategic hedge against geopolitical instability, tariffs, and the possibility that Chinese suppliers could cut off the tap. Put simply, Tesla looked at the Inflation Reduction Act's incentives and recognized a cold truth Incentives don't matter if you don't have the resources to back them up. Canada provided the missing piece. And now, Quebec's lithium will be the backbone of Tesla's next generation of battery cells. Like Netflix, Tesla isn't flirting with Canada. They're entrenching critical operations there because the old assumptions about American dominance no longer hold. While Tesla is locking down minerals and Netflix is scaling content production. Apple has chosen a more discreet strategy one that may ultimately prove just as transformative. Over the past year, 
Apple posted more than 100 chip design jobs in Ottawa and Montreal, targeting engineers who specialize in advanced processors and AIO-assisted workflows. These aren't routine support positions, they are the seeds of future products that won't launch for years, custom silicon that drives everything from iPhones to MacBooks by Canada. Because Silicon Valley, for all its fame, is facing a talent squeeze. Semiconductor engineers are in short supply. Compensation is sky high, and the competition among big tech companies has never been more brutal. Meanwhile, Canada quietly developed a deep reservoir of AI researchers and chip designers, thanks to universities like McGill, the University of Toronto, and Waterloo. These institutions have benefited from government funding and a strong local startup ecosystem that supports semiconductor innovation. Apple sees the same writing on the wall that Tesla, Netflix, Meta, and Microsoft do. The United States can no longer guarantee the smooth flow of talent, resources, and approvals that once made it the uncontested home of tech. So Apple isn't just expanding offices. They're building a hedge-on insurance policy that ensures their next wave of chips isn't held hostage to U.S. policy gridlock. Put all these moves together and you see an undeniable trend. Five of the world's most influential companies are repositioning themselves for the long haul. They're not chasing headlines or temporary tax breaks. They're building resilient systems in a country that promises stability, predictability, and a pipeline of skilled people. It's easy to underestimate these quiet shifts, but if you look closer, you realize they're redefining where innovation, production, and economic power will reside over the next two decades. So the next time you pick up your phone, stream a new series, or watch headlines about electric cars and cloud computing. Remember, the epicenter of progress is already shifting, and Canada is no longer a supporting actor. It's the stage itself. If you've found this as eye-opening as I have, now's the time to subscribe and weigh in. Which giant do you think will be next to call Canada home and what will it mean for the rest of the world when the most powerful companies decide the future belongs up north? Let's start that conversation now.